Hello everybody, Father Stephen Abrado, ProtestChildKilling.com, YouTube. So from ProtestChildKilling.com, you can get to my YouTube. From my YouTube, you can get to ProtestChildKilling.com. You can get to Rally for Personhood. You can donate to me. From ProtestChildKilling.com, you can get to all my social media platforms. Again, if you're watching me on YouTube, thank you. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button, I guess. That's See, as I watch all these YouTubers who have hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, uh, maybe by the end of today I'll have 4,000. Wouldn't that be exciting? Uh, hundreds of thousands, millions, they always say. And make sure you hit, make sure you su subscribe and hit that like button and the bell and, uh, you know, and I'm not sure I really get it, but anyway, they say it, so uh, they have uh, big numbers, so I guess I should say it too, right? Uh, but anyway, um, yes, and if you're not watching on YouTube, please go to YouTube and do all those things. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so Father Stephen Imperato, protestchildkilling.com, YouTube, right uh, there. Realestateforlife.org, if you're buying a home, selling a home, moving from a blue state to a red state, you need a realtor, realestateforlife.org. Uh, uh, they will donate part of their commission to... Uh, a pro-life activist of your choice. It can be me if you want, but a pregnancy resource center or a local activist would be great. Please do not give to the mainstream corporate pro-life groups that are making millions and millions and millions of dollars and are not even interested in the abolition of abortion through constitutional personhood. So I want to talk today about getting to heaven. How can we guarantee getting to heaven? How can you be sure to get to heaven? Right, uh, this this whole idea of once saved, always saved, the assurance of salvation, proclaim Jesus on your lips and believe it in your hearts. Um, is that true? Our evangelical brothers and sisters who say that? Well, I'm going to include that in our talks, okay? That's what we're going to talk about. How can you be assured of eternal salvation? How can you make sure, guarantee, that you get saved, that you are going to spend eternity in heaven. That's what we're going to talk about today. So, uh, yeah, get out your popcorn, as they say. Uh, but get out, I think, get out your crucifix. Get out your crucifix, right? Is that how guaranteed to get saved? The crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, the Blessed Mother... Blessed Mother, Our Lady of America, right? Maybe. The Rosary, maybe. Divine Mercy Chaplain, maybe. Eucharist, maybe. Let's see. All right, I'm going to give you my thoughts, and then I'd love to hear your thoughts. So you can put your thoughts down in the comments, and I'd really love to see what you're thinking in regards to that. We're going to pray with each other, for each other, as we always do. We're going to pray for the Pope. We're going to pray for the leaders of the pro-life movement. We're going to pray for all those who are physically and spiritually uh, afflicted, but first we're going to do our opening prayers as we always do. And we start off always by invoking St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs, mourning and weep in this valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, this eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile show unto us the blessed fruit of thy own Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech, I'm sorry, remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, 
and never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy clemency hear and answer us. Amen. St. Joseph. Let me get my St. Joseph out here. St. Joseph, intercede for us. Spouse of Mary, patron saint of men, the church priest, right? My patron saint, I was born on March 19th, the Feast of St. Joseph. Pray for us. Today is the memorial of St. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, intercede for us. Let's see what the Book of Saints says for today. Today is the 5th of September. And, and the book has Blessed Teresa of Calcutta. And actually, back then it was Blessed Teresa. And now it's Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa says, because we cannot see God, we cannot yet express our love for him face to face. But for our neighbor, who we can see, we can do what we would love to do for Jesus if he were visible. Joy is a net of love by which we can capture souls. To see Jesus in everyone we meet, to be Jesus in everyone we meet. Is that the assurance of salvation? Well, Jesus says, what you did for the least of my brethren, you did for me. And what you didn't do for the least of my brethren, you didn't do for me. That's Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. That's the judgment of the sheep and goats. So I think that that's really, really important, right? Right? I think so. I think so. Jesus says in chapter 6 of Matthew, verses 12 to 15, Right? Uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And he says that if you forgive others their trespasses, then you'll be forgiven. And if you don't forgive others their trespasses, then you won't forgive them. So is that the secret? Is that the guarantee to eternal salvation? Jesus says, if you eat my body and drink my blood, you'll have eternal life and I'll raise you up on the last day. And if you don't eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Is that the promise of eternal salvation? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Do all of these things individually assure our eternal salvation? Well, I think some are, are, are more definite than others, surely. Jesus says that if you eat my body and drink my blood, you will have eternal life, and I will raise you up on the last day. That sounds like a promise. But of course, then we know there's two caveats to that, that we do it believingly, right, that we know and we're convinced, and that we're properly disposed, right, that we're heaping grace upon grace, not sin upon sin, right? So, so yes, I think that that is the key, right? The key to us being guaranteed heaven is dying in the state of grace. Dying in the state of grace. And so a corollary to that, dying in the state of grace, means being obedient, being obedient to all that Jesus taught. And then when we fall short, if we commit a mortal sin, if we sever our relationship with Jesus to say a, an act of contrition immediately till we can get to confession, to get back into the state of grace at least conditionally till we can get back in the state of grace absolutely, right? But it is obedience to all that Jesus commanded. That's what he said at the end of the Great Commission. It's about obedience, so the Blessed Mother said, Behold, I'm the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. And then she told us, the last words we hear her say is, Do as he tells you. Jesus was obedient even unto death, death on the cross, right? He became the source of salvation according to Hebrews to all who obey, all who obey. So it's our desire to be obedient. And our commitment to be obedient, due diligence in terms of our obedience, that guarantees our eternal salvation to all that Jesus commanded, right? To all that Jesus taught, right? Everything. And then, of course, some things are more important than others. But it is obedience. Now, uh, is imperfect obedience, I talked about this the other day, imperfect obedience enough for
for us to attain eternal salvation? Absolutely. In other words, imperfect obedience, where we're being obedient because we fear eternal damnation? Absolutely. Does Jesus want us to live that way? No. He wants us to live in perfect obedience. Right? Being obedient, lovingly, humbly obedient to Jesus because he loved us first and he died for us. That's how he wants us to live. In peace, with peace, not in fear. Not in fear. But the bottom line is the assurance of salvation comes from being in the state of grace. That's why scripture says we're saved by grace. We're saved by grace. So we're saved by faith, which is manifested in loving, humble obedience, loving, humble obedience, persevering in that loving, humble obedience. We have the assured hope of eternal salvation, faith, hope, and love working together. And the greatest of these is love, loving, humble obedience. And that is the work of our Lord. That is our work. That is the work we are to accomplish, obedience, to be obedient to all that Jesus commanded. So the Eucharist, first and foremost, right? I mean, it erases a multitude of sins, bringing others into the faith, extending Christ's mercy, erases a multitude of sins, doing reparation, offering up all of our prayers, praying the rosary every day, the promise of the scapula, praying the divine mercy chaplet every day, Liturgy of the Hours, extending Christ's mercy, though, huge, right? The two aspects of Christ's mercy, which you did for the least of my brethren, you did for me, and what you didn't do for the least of my brethren, you didn't do for me. Kind of when Jesus talks in the positive and negative, as he does in regards to what you did for the least of my brethren, you did for me. The Eucharist, if you eat my body and drink my blood, you'll have eternal life. The extending of forgiveness of sins. If you forgive others, you'll be forgiven. And then in each of those, he gives the reverse and warns, right? So those must be important, right? But it all comes down to loving, humble obedience. But imperfect obedience is good enough. Jesus just doesn't want us to live that way. That is the obedience that the Jews lived under. And you can see how they kept falling into sin falling into doubt, constantly in fear, right? Fear is not what Jesus wants. He says, be not afraid, right? They say 365 times. I mean, God bless those who did actually count that in all of Scripture. 365, 366 times, I don't know, all right? So Mother Teresa understood the whole obedience thing. Well, first of all, the Blessed Mother understood the whole obedience thing. Joseph understood the whole obedience thing. St. John the Baptist all the saints understood the whole obedience thing, right? So, uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, that is the key to eternal salvation, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And the beauty of it is that the Catholic Church, our Catholic faith, the fullness of truth, the positive faith that has been passed on from Jesus Right? All that Jesus commands has been passed on from Jesus to the apostles, to all the bishops throughout the church, 2,000 year uh, uh, history, uh, is there for us to facilitate our means of eternal salvation. We just need to. Jesus said it to Peter at the very end of the chat of the Gospel of John, right? Just follow me. Just follow me. Just be obedient to me. Just do as I tell you, right? Right? It's that simple. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right? Some of you are going to say some are more important than others. Hey, that may be true. But I really think that if you leave something out to the degree that it's a mortal sin, and yes, you can do mortal sins in omission. Yes, full knowledge, full consent. If you purposely avoid doing something you're morally obligated to do, you can commit mortal sin. Full knowledge, full consent, grave matter, right? So, for instance, these abortion uh, uh, referendums, if you purposely don't go and vote because you don't want to go and vote opposing these amendments, that's as much as, as not, not going and opposing 
is really, right? Silence is consent. Is that what they say, right? So yes, you can mortally sin through omission. Yes, you can. And the, and the proof of that is what you didn't do for the least of my brethren, you didn't do for me. If you don't forgive others, right? The failure to uh, forgive, holding a grudge. Now you may say, well, that's not omission, Father. It is. Holding a grudge is the failure to give forgiveness to somebody else, all right? So we can commit mortal sins through omission, all right? Okay, that's why in the confidi we say, for what I've done and what I have failed to do, all right? Okay, very good. All right, so let's pray for all those who suffer physical and spiritual trials and tribulations, right? St. Charbel, the miracle worker, my son John, adopted son, for his repose of his soul, all those who suffer physical and spiritual trials and tribulations, cancer victims, heart disease, strokes, diabetes, clinical depression, suicidal ideation, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right. For Abby Johnson, Lila Rose, uh, 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 Margie Danifelser, Kristen Hawkins, uh, Sean Carney, Frank Pavone, Laura Mazuka, all the leaders of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, Let's pray a Hail Mary for their change of heart and mind, that they become abolitionists and seek the abolition of abortion through constitutional personhood. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests. But first, if you want these four prayer cards, again, go to... Um, my YouTube channel, you can get my, 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 my website, you get my websites, get my mailing address, you can find my mailing address, email me, you can get my email address, email me, I'll give you the mailing address, all right, and then you can send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, and I will send you as many of these packets of prayer cards as you send me envelopes for, again, no donation necessary, but you can donate, you can donate to me if you want, we're doing this campaign to put out these, uh, uh, one minute uh, videos on opposing Amendment 4 down here in Florida, and you can contribute to that. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests. Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and through his death and resurrection. has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the church and remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mother Teresa, St. Joseph, St. Stephen, and see for the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, especially in our hour of need, our Lady Guadalupe, and see for the conversion of the world, the end to abortion. Amen. Our Lady of America.com, our Lady of America.com, there's the image, the diary, there's the statue, the original. Website of Sister Mildred the Seer, Our Lady of America dot com, the the approved USCCB private devotion. It's an approved private devotion by the USCCB, Our Lady of America dot com. Our daily offering, offer up our entire day to Jesus and ask Him to shed His mercy down upon us. Right, Amen. Our work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time. We ask our Lord to shed his mercy on our personal intentions, family intentions, health intentions, ministerial intentions, the intentions of all those who we said we were prayed for, including those who may forget to pray for, and for the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, and support us each day. Realestateforlife.org, rallyforpersonhood.com, themensmarch.com. So what do I got coming up? Feast of Padre Pio, September 23rd. All right, we're defending the church. Defending the church on October 6th. I believe it's October 6th. Sunday, October 6th. Sunday, October 6th, the National Rosary Rally, National Eucharistic Procession, and Rosary Coast to Coast. Sunday, October 6th. Again, you can go to rosarycoasttocoast.com, rosarycoasttocoast.com. Then the Men's March, November 16th. You can go to mensmarch.com, themensmarch.com, or you can go to uh, you can go to 
protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Everything is there, including access to my YouTube. Go to my YouTube and you can find Protest Child Killing. It's very simple. And everything about me, my campaigns, my ministries, everything about me, you can find. Amen? Amen. All right. So we did all of our prayers. We prayed with each other, for each other. Be assured of my prayers. You know, I pray the rosary every single day. And the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Right, and of course, the Liturgy of the Hours, Adoration, Mass. Check out my Mass, my homily, uh, uh, Eucharistic Adoration from this morning. Mother Teresa preached on mercy. It's all there. All right, so I think we've said all that we need to say. You know how to get to heaven. And as I always say, as I send everybody off, I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Go out to the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.